Hey everyone, I hope you had a good week. I would like to start this video off by apologizing for not releasing a video last week. My dog got extremely sick with a liver failure and passed away. And I got extremely sick afterwards, which you can probably still hear it in my voice. And I apologize in advance for that. To make up for it, I am going to release two videos this week. The original video I promised, which is above the bit and behind the bit. And then I thought another video that would go great hand in hand with that is covering Bend. Thank you for joining me yet again. Um, this week we are going to be talking about one of my biggest pet peeves. If you've ever taken lessons with me, I'm a big stickler on position, collection, bend, etc. So we're going to start by breaking down those maneuvers with above the bit, behind the bit, and on the bit. So I have some diagrams. I promise I'm not going to make every week nothing but diagrams, but again, um, I just want to try to get in your head a little bit and show you some stuff, and then we're going to start kind of doing different exercises starting next week and teaching you how to put all of this education you've learned to use. So with that being said, let's break it down a little bit. The best way to get your horse on the bit is to focus on the horse's body. What is on the bit? Being on the bit is what happens when your horse is moving forward and straight and accepts the connection from your arms and your hands. Accepting your hands means that the horse trusts your hands and will be consistent and soft on it, whether they're at the walk, trot, jumping, rein back, whatever discipline you're doing, any situation, your horse has to be soft, round, and kind of using their back more. Above the bit occurs when the horse is resisting the rider's hands by moving away from them upwards. Behind the bit occurs when the horse is resisting the hands by moving behind the connection. In both cases, the problem is communication that results in the loss of connection and balance. Many riders are focused on getting the horse in frame. Unfortunately, the belief is that the horse's crest is round and their head is down, that their horse is on the bit. This is a false frame. Riders must be able to balance their bodies on their horse through any movement of the horse and not interfere with their natural way of going. We've all seen them in the pastures doing flying lead changes, round, collected, looking amazing, doing big extended trots. But when the rider gets on, then the horse all of a sudden doesn't have that big natural movement. The extended trot that you saw flying across the pasture looking so beautiful is now choppy. Their head's up. They're fighting. Um, they barely want to canter, let alone do flying lead changes, etc. So what it is is we tend to, as riders, hold and and push and, and hang on them a little bit too much to where we kind of get in their way of their natural abilities and their natural movements. The natural reaction for a human is to hold on for balance. This is obviously never a good thing because horses tend to pull and fight pressure instead of um, give and soften to it. An effective rider shifts their horse's balance off their forehand and towards their hind end. This doesn't happen by pulling on the mouth. It happens with lateral and longitude exercises to strengthen the muscles in order to carry more weight towards the hind end. The best exercises that you can do to help with these situations is a lot of lateral movements, shoulder in, haunches in, jumping, etc. Misunderstandings occur when the rider is unaware of the moments when their body hinders what they are asking their horse to do. Our jobs as trainers is to point out those moments to the rider. When they realize that their aids are conflicting, it's obvious why the horse is confused. Some of these include crossing your hands over their withers, spreading your hands down very wide, bracing, riding with your hands slammed down, leaning in a turn or during lateral work, pinching with the knees, locking muscles is a really big one, and not breathing. So to get your horse on the bit, concentrate on the horse's way of moving and balance. Try to do your best to listen to your horse and let them be the teacher. It's always best to start with your cues to do less is more and you can gradually go on and on and on. Your horse is always going to be the best teacher. Be patient and over time you will get it through each exercise. Up next I have a video of me demonstrating all of this on one of our lesson horses Zanzibar. Please don't judge my stirrups. I did not adjust them, and I uh, just jumped on after one of my students' lessons. 
So again, don't judge my stirrups, but I really, really hope this helps. Start this way. <coughs> okay, ready? Yep. Okay. So this is above the bit. So if you notice, his nose is up and out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add leg, hold that outside rein, do a little vibration. That's on the bit, okay? So you notice every time I've gotta get him on the bit, I add a little bit of leg, I hold my outside, open up my inside rein to the top outside of my hip, a little vibration. So now if I hold too much hands, he's behind the bit. So obviously you can tell he doesn't like that. Good, so if I wanna get him from behind the bit to above the bit, I just add a little bit of legs. Sorry, not above the bit, on the bit. I just add a little bit of legs. So now he's on the bit. Okay, so the most important part of my ride is the transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my outside, do a little vibration with my inside rein, and I'm gonna talk to him through a series of half halts. I'm not gonna hold and hang on him, and I'm not gonna do this. I literally talk just through my fingertips and a little bit of movement in between my shoulder blades. I'm gonna hold the outside, ride the transitions to a trot. So anytime he gets stuck or locked, I'm gonna add legs. Nine times out of 10, when people have problems with their horse's head, they always wanna fix it with their like right there, he's getting stuck in one of the sides. I have to add legs. Nine times out of ten, somebody wants to uh, fix any problems that they're having with their hands, and that's not it. It's always gas pedals and knees. Good. So I've got a nice little collective trot now. He's slightly coming behind the bed a little bit, so I'm going to add legs. A little bit of half halt. Good. Hit the gas and some extended trot. Good. Change my bend. Okay, so that wraps up our video on above the bit, behind the bit, and on the bit. I really hope it helps. Some of the points of references that I used was from an article off of Google by Laura Clayman. So the next video I'm going to post as soon as I post this one is about bend. And I think that that would really help you understand how to put the two together if you can find time to watch them both back to back. Again, sorry I missed last week's video, but I'm releasing Bend right now to make up for it. Thank you again for joining me, and we'll see you soon.